Well, it looks like we have legitimate and well-documented lab results, and it only raises more questions as to whether this fog is done intentionally. And even further, can it harm us? And you're going to be shocked at what's been found and its connection to a program in the 1950s which has now been declassified called Operation Sea Spray. We have Peggy Miller 9064 to thank for this video. She gave me a tip and it led me to some accurate and no longer surprising information. So here's Peggy's question. Hi, I just watched a video that you should watch. It was Riverside Homestead Life just a little while ago, and he shared that the fog that was hanging around in so many places was tested, and he has the results. It's on YouTube, and I just watched it, so it must be his latest video. Please look at it, and with your medical background, hopefully you could do a video on it. Thanks for all your great information. I did just that, Peggy, and I found some interesting information. First, I went to the Riverside channel he was talking about a highly retweeted lab results from Naples, Florida, on the strange fog that mysteriously appeared across the world. I followed the retweets until I got to the source of the results which was ex-user BBBRW21, who took to Twitter to reveal results of testing that they personally did on the strange fog that propagated after all the drone sightings over military bases and before all the fires in the den of perversion known as Los Angeles. I did a video on the fog previously that I'll link. These tests, purporting to have found a bacterial parasite in the fog in southwest Florida, began to propagate on social media. When I researched this particular bacteria, I found a history of it that is very interesting, related to a now declassified program known as Operation Sea Spray. I had one problem. How do I know that some goof with an agenda didn't type up this analysis? So I wrote down the sample number, which is WD8593 81A10, and I followed many retweets and links until I got to an X user known as BR21 or at BBBRW21. The user has an icon that appears to be someone wearing a helmet on a background of fog so I had to consider the possibility that the account was set up specifically to spread information about the fog. But it wasn't. BR21 was established on Twitter in March of 2022, so no red flag there. Then I read some of the tweets and saw that he documented what he was doing very well. He photographed the samples taken and posted a picture with his notes. Collection number two was the sample number. WD 859381A10 that has been spread across the internet so I knew I had the source. I want to make a couple of observations. BR21 posted a bit about himself but understandably wants anonymity, and I would never seek to expose him. BR21 did say that we own a CLIA and COLA certified molecular lab that's part of a leading infection prevention and control group nationally. He posted a photo which shows a professional collection procedure and access to specimen collection bags, swabs, and vials, and also the ability to print barcode labels. This is consistent with laboratory procedures that I have seen when working for the state. BR21 ran approximately 25 different tests in total on five different specimens on January 5, 2025. Keep in mind that there are potentially tens of thousands of different pathogens. So 25 is not all-inclusive by any means, but I'm sure they tested for many of the most probable bacterial contaminants. The results showed that of the five samples, only one was positive, and that was for Serratia marcescens. Remember that not all potential pathogens were tested, and the lab is not equipped to test for chemicals, so there still could be something in the fog that wasn't specifically tested for. So remember that, guys. As I proceed to unravel this maze, only one out of five samples contained anything, and I am confident that these are valid tests done by professionals. I have linked the complete report entitled The Fog Experiment in the description for your review. Now let's look at the implications of this. So sample number WD859381, A10 tested positive for Serratia marcescens, so obviously we need to take a look at what this is. 
Serratia marcescens is a gram-negative rod-shaped bacteria related in the Enterobacteria family, which includes E. coli commonly found in feces. S. marcescens thrives in moist environments and is widely distributed in nature such as rivers, lakes, and ponds. It's also found in rich organic soil such as agricultural fields and rotting vegetation. It is also present in the air via aerosols generated by wind or human activity and can be found in fog and mist due to its ability to attach to water droplets. Serratia is frequently found in hospital and residential settings, especially in bathrooms, kitchens, and medical equipment. If you see a reddish or pinkish color on damp surfaces like tiles, shower curtains, and faucets, S. marcescens could be present. Inhaling or being exposed to Serratia marcescens through the respiratory route can potentially lead to respiratory tract infections, especially in individuals with compromised immunity or pre-existing health conditions. If the infection is confined to the upper respiratory tract, it can cause nasal congestion or discharge, sore throat, sinus pain or pressure, and mild fever or chills. If the infection spreads to the lungs or lower respiratory system, it can cause bronchitis or pneumonia with symptoms such as persistent cough, productive or dry, shortness of breath or difficulty breathing, chest pain, especially during breathing or coughing, fever, often high and accompanied by chills, fatigue or general malaise and wheezing or crackling sounds in the lungs, there are some severe and rare complications, including sepsis, if the infection spreads to the bloodstream. In severe cases, abscesses can form in the lungs. Severe pneumonia or other complications can lead to difficulty maintaining adequate oxygen levels leading to respiratory failure. So while not particularly unusual, infection with this bacteria could be concerning. However, Serratia marcescens is considered an opportunistic pathogen, meaning it generally doesn't cause harm to healthy individuals with strong immunity, but can exploit weakened immune systems to cause infections. In general, S. marcescens is not very common in healthy individuals, as their immune system can effectively control or eliminate the bacteria before it can cause infection. Nonetheless, it remains a significant concern in hospital settings, where it can be transmitted through medical equipment or invasive procedures. So this finding of Serratia M in one out of five samples of fog is not particularly alarming. The concentration was relatively low, and I'm afraid that some media may have overhyped its danger and mystery. Having said that, there is an interesting history of this particular bacteria in biological warfare. So let's talk about that. Operation Sea Spray was a U.S. military experiment conducted in 1950 in which the U.S. Navy secretly sprayed a biological agent over the city of San Francisco, California. The primary objective was to test the vulnerability of a large population to a biological warfare attack, specifically using aerosolized bacteria. And guess which bacteria the Navy sprayed into the air using ships positioned off the coast? You guessed it. They sprayed a concoction of Serratia marcescens that was released over a period of six days and spread over a wide area of the San Francisco Bay region, exposing nearly 800,000 residents to the bacteria. The bacteria dispersed effectively throughout San Francisco and demonstrated its ability to cause infections. Following the release, 11 people were hospitalized at Stanford Hospital with rare Serratia marcescens urinary tract infections, and one patient, Edward J. Nevin, died. Nevin's family sued the U.S. government for wrongful death due to the U.S. government's negligence during a simulated biological warfare test in San Francisco in 1950. It went to the Supreme Court and the final judgment in this case is something that we have to consider whether we want such laws in place. Are you ready? The higher court upheld the district court ruling that court concluded in part that the government was immune from suit because its acts fell within the discretionary function exemption to the FTCA, 28 U.S.C. Section 2680, A, 
which exempts the government even if that discretion is abused. The law is linked in the description for those that are focusing on legislative changes in your humanitarian efforts. To put this into perspective, in 1950, the population of San Francisco was about 775,000 people, so we are looking at a very small percentage of exposed people who became seriously ill. But this story gets even better. Next, I found a document released to a Freedom of Information request in the Black Vault, which I will link in the description. It is a letter from the Department of Army to a John Greenwald at the Office of the Chief Counsel. The request included documents pertaining to a 1977 incident that the U.S. Army had staged a mock biological attack on San Francisco, California. Well, the government actually released a 47-page document explaining the biological warfare program in the U.S. and its establishment at Fort Detrick in Virginia. The document confirms that the first large area vulnerability test was conducted in San Francisco Bay in September 1950 using stimulants BG, SM, and fluorescent particles. The SM is Serratia marcescens, and we saw sparkling or fluorescent particles in some of the fog videos. The BG is Bacillus globigii, now known as Bacillus atrophius. It is a spore-forming microorganism used as an anthrax simulant in biological warfare testing. BG would be a logical addition to any fog test as BG, serratia, fluorescent particles, and starch is the recipe to simulate a biological release. Simulants are substances used to mimic the properties or behavior of a biological warfare agent. Since a simulant is not supposed to be harmful to the population, after the San Francisco release and subsequent infections, Serratia M is allegedly no longer used in biological warfare studies. One other document obtained from the CIA vault that I have linked for you is a December 1984 article published in the Washington Post, stating that the Army and the CIA triggered mock epidemics during the 1960s by spraying targets such as Chicago and New York subway passengers. So there is a long history of the government releasing pathogens in our air to simulate epidemic or pandemic response. So in summary, the recent fog that had large particles still has not been identified to my satisfaction. There's still the possibility of smart dust, as explained in my first video on the mysterious fog. Additionally, there is the possibility that the pathogens Serratia marcescens or Bacillus globigii could have been pursuant to previous pandemic response research programs like Operation Sea Spray. We can't rule out the possibility that aerosolized Serratia M occurred naturally in the one sample due to the very wet conditions of the cloud fog. So I wish I could tell you if they are releasing chemicals onto us without our knowledge but there simply isn't enough evidence. So we will keep an eye on this situation, and like Peggy did, please post links to new information that you find on this fog, and I'll investigate it. I encourage you to hit the links in the description and start poking around the government online vaults. You never know what you'll find. Don't forget to like, share this important information with friends and family, and always tell me what you're thinking. Let's end this with a quote from an amazing patriot, Thomas Jefferson, who said, Eternal vigilance is the price of freedom, and this includes the defense against the invisible threat of biological weapons.